So this is my customized CME CNC Rostock Max V2 3D printer. I'm going to be going over some of the stuff that I've done with it here. The most obvious one is this outside enclosure. It runs down from the bottom of the bed all the way to the top uh, surface there. It's made out of just painted plywood on the outside and uh, on the inside you can see it's fully covered in tin foil. Uh, it's just aluminum foil that I use some Elmer's glue to adhere to the actual wood. The idea here is I want to create a reflective enclosure that would reflect heat in and by doing this um, it would keep the actual air temperature in there much warmer. You can see the use of 3D printed parts as well in the back and on the top uh, for this enclosure too. This is a part of a light that I actually just cannibalized that was part of a desk lamp. It's only 40 watts but it actually keeps this whole thing about 5 degrees Celsius warmer and every little thing matters when you do this kind of thing. If you've never seen the Rostock or the Delta type design, this is what it looks like. It's crazy. When it's actually printing, it looks like a big spider or something. Uh, we'll see that in just a couple of minutes. Because this was the Rostock Max V2, it was a, a kit, that's a lot of the wiring I had to do. And you can't even see it, but there's a ton of wiring there. Just some cool little decals basically saying keep your hands off. My logo, of course. And up top is our little seismic sensor there in case it vibrates too much we'll see the water moving I'm gonna put the panels back on and then we'll see this thing printing the Delta 3D printer operates by using a series of belts on towers there are three of these towers here to move up and down these trolleys here which of course then move the arms which moves the actual printer head the motor for these belts are located in the base there and that's how it operates so precisely. It's a lot of trigonometry and a lot of math going on in the background that we can't see. In this case, I'm making a set of the catches and the plunger head. Here you can see the printer making just the first layer of the parts. And the best analogy I have to this is a deck of cards. A single playing card has almost no thickness and we often consider paper like this two-dimensional. We put it on our table here and it's almost flat against the surface. As more cards are added, however, until you have a three-dimensional, basically rectangular prism. With this technique, you can make complex shapes and also very large shapes, too. It does this by printing a solid perimeter on the outside of the parts, which is most of the strength, and a pattern on the inside to fill in the gaps. This reduces the print time, which is already pretty significant, several hours even for a small part, but also makes the finished products incredibly light. So here you can see the first layer being formed, or the first couple of layers I should say. It's been about half an hour. These prints aren't very big, but it's going to take a long time. This is a high quality print, so the layers are very thin. So that is my 3D printer and what I'm going to be using for making most of my blasters from now on. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video everybody. Like, comment, subscribe, and I hope to see you soon.